Your operating system is capable of running multiple operations at the same time, even if it runs on a single core processor. In that case, the operating system switches quickly between the tasks, running a bit of code of task 1, then task 2, task 3, and so on. It does it so fast that you get the illusion of the processes running at the same time. If you have a multi-core processor, or even several processors, the OS can schedule threads in such a way that these applications really run on different cores with true parallelism. You can also use this feature inside your program by asking the operating system to run certain operations in your application in parallel. When the OS starts your program, it creates a thread of execution, a sequence of instructions starting from the beginning of the main function and runs it on the CPU. Every instruction you write in your main function is executed on that thread along with any other function because everything in your program ultimately originates from main. Now you can request your operation to run in parallel by creating a thread. Regardless of how the OS decides to schedule the threads, from programmer's perspective, they run in parallel. In case of this program, you can see that the output from the main function is mixed with the output of the function running on a parallel thread. In this tutorial, we'll talk about using standard C++ threads for background processing, but WX Widgets includes a WX thread class, which is the framework's implementation of multi-threading. The threading support in the C++ standard library was added in C++11, so it's newer than WXThread. For me, it's also easier to use because you don't need to subclass anything, but both are essentially the same, as they use the same low-level libraries and operating system mechanics under the hood. We will explore WXThread and WXThread helper classes in next tutorials, but here we focus on the standard C++ threads. Let's start where we left off in the WXYIELD tutorial. There we created a CPU-intensive task that runs on the main thread. We managed to avoid the UI unresponsiveness by repeatedly calling WXYIELD so that WX widgets can respond to events in the middle of our long-running task. This created an illusion of parallelism using just single thread. We also implemented a mechanism to properly handle the closing of the window when the user does that during the call to WXYIELD. We first reject the close event, set a flag, and finish the closing inside the long running operation. See the WXYIELD video for more details on why this is needed. Changing this approach to a multi threaded one seems simple, but there are some pitfalls we will discuss later. Let's start by wrapping our computation in a function using lambda. First, we output the thread ID to the console so that we can see that the button click handler and the actual computation run on different threads. We create a lambda to contain our long running task and we again output the thread ID. To then run this function on a thread, we just need to construct the standard thread object and pass the function as a parameter. The thread starts as soon as the thread object is constructed. Before we exit the click handler, we need to either detach or join our thread. Our standard thread object is a local object constructed inside this method, so it will be destroyed when the method exits. Calling the destructor without first joining or detaching a thread is an error that leads to a call to the standard terminate function, which basically crashes the whole program. Here we detach our thread, meaning we disconnect the thread resource, the actual thread of execution run by the operating system, from the thread object. The thread keeps running in the background, but now it has nothing to do with our object, so the object can be safely deleted when the function exits. The other option is to join the thread. Calling join blocks the current thread until the other thread finishes. If we call it here, instead of detach, the main thread would block until the computation finishes. That's not what we want, because we want the UI to be responsive. There is a way to use the joinable threads correctly, and I will show you that later in this video. For now, we stick with detached threads. 
So we don't wait for the thread to finish. We create the thread object, which starts the long running computation, then we detach it, letting it run in the background, and we exit the on button click handler. The computation runs in the background and the WX widgets event loop is ready to process another event. It's not blocked by the button click handler, which exited almost immediately. There are a few problems with this code though. First, we can't just call the UI methods like updating labels and progress bars from some background thread. Every update to the UI should happen on the same thread that created the UI. Because the F function runs on a background thread, we need to ask WX widgets to perform updates on the main thread by using call after. This method schedules a function to be run on the event loop on the main thread. This is important to understand. Our background thread does not stop here and does not wait for the function inside call after to finish. We just say to the framework, here's the code we want you to run on the main thread when your event loop is free. And we move to the next line in our F function. The code we requested in call after will run in parallel and it may happen immediately after that line or a bit later. We use call after whenever we need to update the UI to set the progress bar value, destroy the window when the user requests the close and to notify the user that we finished our task. Note that we capture the needed variables by value in the Lambda declaration. That way we are able to pass them to main thread without having to worry about proper inter-thread data sharing. As you can see, the F function runs on a different thread and properly updates the UI, including the progress bar and the label. Closing the window in the middle of the operation is also handled correctly. Still, we are doing something illegal here. The bool flags we use are accessed by both threads. That wouldn't be a problem if both threads were only reading these values. But in our case it's possible that for example the main thread sets the quit requested value to true in onclose and, while in the middle of that operation, the background thread reads the same variable. This is a problematic race condition and according to the C++ standard this results in an undefined behavior. Also, because of how caching works, there is no guarantee that after thread A sets a variable to some value, thread B will see the same value immediately. To fix both issues, we need to use atomic variables. This guarantees that there will be no race conditions if both threads attempt to access the same variable and that all threads will see the most recent value written to that variable. We don't need to change the way we read or update these variables. The atomic template has the most of the operators overloaded, so we can use these flags just like regular booleans. Note that the operation took much longer than previously. Using atomics, which are a thread synchronization mechanism, does incur some runtime cost, but we can fix that easily by moving the quit check to the outer loop. Now we are back to our usual speed. There is one more issue. This one is quite subtle and shows how careful you need to be when writing multi-threaded code, even as simple as in this tutorial. Consider what will happen if the user clicks a start button when the background thread is in displays in code. Remember that the threads do run in parallel so unless an operation is atomic or otherwise protected by a mutex for example, the other thread may execute its code in the middle of that operation. Here in the background thread, we reset our flags in response to a quid request and then schedule some code to be run on main thread. That code is supposed to destroy the window. Now, if the user clicks the start button here, the onclick handler will check the processing variable which is now set to false. We will start the operation again just before we intend to destroy the whole window. After the window destruction, the new background thread will still be running and if it gets to a call after before the application quits, we will get the crash. 
We can simulate this by adding a sleep operation after resetting the flags. This will ensure that we have enough time to hit the start button at the exact place to cause the crash. After starting the operation, we click close, requesting the operation to stop and the window to close. In the middle of that process, we click the start button again. The flag is reset, so the new operation starts and after that, the first operation schedules the destruction of the window. The window gets destroyed and the new operation crashes while trying to access the released this pointer. To fix this, we need to move the flag resetting to the function inside call after. This function will be run on main thread, so no other main thread event will be able to get between the reset calls and the destroy calls. We do the same when resetting the processing flag at the end of the operation. We use the main thread as a synchronization mechanism. Now everything is coherent from its point of view and the processing flag always correctly reflects the state of the task. Because that flag is now used only by the main thread, we can remove the atomic template. The quit requested flag on the other hand needs to remain atomic as it is being checked in the background thread. Let's see how we can switch from using a detached thread to a joinable thread. The join method pauses the current thread, waiting for the background thread to finish. We cannot call this at the beginning of the operation, because pausing the UI for the whole time the task is running defeats our objective of processing stuff in the background. We can, however, join the thread when the operation is finished. To do this, we must first declare the thread object as a member variable, so it does not get destroyed when we return from the onClick handler. Remember, if the thread object is destroyed before it's detached or joined, we get the standard terminate and our application crashes. So we need to make sure the object is alive before it's joined. We start the thread in the onClick handler as usual and we wait for its completion in two cases. First, when the user requests the window close and second, when the computation finishes. Everything else stays the same and the application works as before. Now it's time for an exercise for you. What will happen when we reset the flags for the quit request before joining the thread and the user clicks the start button at this point? This is a similar problem to the one we had with the detached thread but the result will be slightly different. We will still get a crash, but a different one. Try to reason about the situation without simulating it first. Imagine the background thread at this line and think what happens on the main thread when user clicks the start button at this point. Feel free to post your answer in the comment section and then check for yourself by simulating the situation using sleep. In this tutorial, we learned how to use the standard C++ threads to do background processing with WX widgets. We discussed how detached and joinable threads work and we touched on basic synchronization using atomic variables. Our background thread never shared any actually important data with the main thread. For example, the sorted array was allocated, used and destroyed only in the background thread. But still we learned how careful we need to be with our code design when programming for multiple threads. In the next tutorial we'll talk about data sharing between threads and various synchronization tools we can employ to do this correctly. But for now that's it. Remember about the exercise and thanks for watching.